Hi, welcome to part 40. We will look at some more questions. The previous parts are in the members zone. You can pay a small membership and become a cloud kernel or cloud ninja member. Subscribe if you have not done already. This will help you with staying tuned with the latest certification content around AWS Cloud, Google Cloud, and Azure Cloud. Remember, this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications. It may be starting Mickey Mouse level certifications, intermediate certifications, or advanced certifications. So in this question, they are making use of a Lambda function to create temporary files, and the, uh, they are looking for a storage where you can keep these temporary files. Where should we keep these temporary files? So when we talk about Lambda, this is a serverless computing. You can write small, small code in different languages like Python, Ruby, Java, and so on. And you can run this code without thinking about servers or clusters. So you don't have to worry about provisioning and managing the servers. You don't have to worry about auto scaling. Everything is done automatically. Okay, so we understood what is Lambda function. And when we are trying to create temporary files, where should we store these temporary files? The exact uh, answer should be temp directory because that is where the temporary files should reside. If we talk about AWS S3, this is a cloud storage which is primarily used for object storage perspective. It may be files, videos, audios, and so on, but this has to be more of a permanent in nature. We do not use it to store temporary files as such. So S3 would be incorrect in this case. Let us talk about EFS. When we talk about EFS, this is called Amazon Elastic File System. This is a file storage piece, which is serverless, but this is again used for permanent files, and it is very good for sharing with multiple people because it is just like a drive, which is mapped, and that is a shared drive on your Windows Explorer if you are on a Windows platform. Consider that in a similar way, this is an elastic file system. It is scalable and it is serverless in nature. So you don't have to manage the server piece of this entity and do not worry about storage. The storage size is infinity ideally. So this is wrong. And then when we are talking about EBS, which is an elastic block store, this is used for high performance block storage and it is a scalable solution, but always remember if there is no EC2, my friend, please listen to me carefully. If there is no EC2 into the equation, EBS is ruled out. EBS is only associated with EC2 instances. Since the question is talking about compute, which compute? They are talking about AWS Lambda compute. They are not talking about AWS EC2 compute. Since EC2 is not mentioned in that question, we would not select EBS. Any case, EBS is used for permanent storage. So this option A, temp directory would be our final answer. See, in this question, we are talking about a developer which is building a web and, and a mobile application for two types of users. What are the user types? You will see this, there are two user types. One is a regular user and guest user. Regular user, that means maybe an a permanent user who has a proper authentication mechanism and guest users are one-time people suppose you go to amazon.com become a guest user and buy something or you can be a full-time customer <laughs> not a full-time customer that means a permanent customer of amazon.com you have your credentials here you log in and you just order something so on so now there are two types of users so you may need two types of authentication. So here they are saying that regular users are required to log in, but guest users do not log in. Okay, and then users can see only their data. So if you have accessed and you can see only the data that is relevant for your domain, you cannot see my data, and I cannot see your data. And regardless of whether they authenticate, so users need AWS credentials before they can access AWS resources. And what is the most secure solution that the developer can implement to allow access to the guest users? See this, uh, a normal user 
we are not worried about the normal user. We are only worried about the guest user because the guest user is coming for one time maybe. So how should we provide a most secure access? So this can be, you can use uh, Cognito credentials provided to issue temporary credentials and that are linked to unauthenticated role that has access to the file. So why it is an unauthenticated role? Because these are guest users. These are not your temporary customers. Or these are not your permanent customers. Permanent customers. They are your temporary customers. So this on the face value looks correct, but what is Cognito? So this is a full form customer identity and access management. Amazon Cognito and this is used to implement secure frictionless customer identity and access management at scale. So Cognito we also use in many cases where you know you log into a website and they say either you create your own credentials uh, like you sign up or you use uh, Google accounts to log in. So that is done using Cognito. So option B they are saying that guys let's set up I am users. That is fine, but then where it gets messed up is they say let's hardcode the IAM credentials, which you if you see anything illogical like this, you should never hardcode the credentials. So this would be easy to say that this is wrong. And C is telling that hey guys, let's generate temporary keys and use those temporary keys to access resources. So this question is not about keys. This is about access, accessibility. It is not about security. Temporary keys, why do we use? It is because we want to encrypt some of the data or we want to tokenize the data so that uh, it cannot be visible with naked eye and the bad players uh, can stay away from it. Even if they try to hack it, they cannot read the data. For example, your credit card numbers those are always tokenized when they are saved in the database or any storage but this is not relevant in our context and option d says let's generate temporary credentials store those credentials in secrets manager see secrets manager uh, you okay, you can store your passwords but if something is so temporary in nature, like one-time access, this guy just comes in, browses, does not buy anything, uh, and it's a guest user. So why do you want to store those things? You only store if this guy signs up, becomes a customer, and uh, then it makes sense to, to do these activities. So option A relatively looks correct on the face value as well as with the options that have been provided. A is apt. Now this next question, this is about deployment. Whenever you see these options and you have to choose two answers here. So when you see these options, scan through it and then you see this is all questioning about deployment, deployment, deployment. Okay. There is a developer, they are making use of Elastic Beanstalk. If we are building web applications and we want very high elasticity, then we make use of Elastic Beanstalk because this makes it easy to deploy these applications and scale the web applications. Remember, it is only uh, primarily used for web applications, not for other users. So in this question, we are talking about web application because that is why we are talking about Elastic Beanstalk. So that is pretty sure. And what is this web application going to do? It is going to support your commerce. It can be a retail. It can be e-commerce which is trying to sell commodities and products it can be a clothing brand anything so according to the company requirement ec2 instances that post one version of the application must be retired when the deployment of a new version is complete so you have this first version and then the moment i have this second version coming in so the first version should go away that is that is a requirement and this guy is our questioning like you have various deployment mechanisms among those various deployment mechanisms which one would be more apt for this scenario so you have to choose two answers which is not just one answer two answers and that is why you see five options so that things can be confusing for you and you make mistakes while answering this question that is how they structure these certification exams and the questions so let us look at 
what would be app in this case see the first option is saying let us deploy using the all at once that means i deployed everywhere together and there will be a significant downtime or some downtime you cannot bypass the downtime because the application has to be overwritten because a new deployment has come and it will override it this is not very much suitable in this case because in our case they are saying that the previous version should only be retired when the deployment of a new version is complete so that the downtime can be minimized as much as possible while you are deploying the new version the old version is still intact and people are able to access and do their job using the old versions the in place deployment is about you know replacing the application version without replacing any infrastructure components so all in place deployment the previous version of the application on each computer resources is stopped and the latest version is installed so that means they are not retiring it after it is uh, they are first stopping it and there will be some downtime in this case and uh, the application it, it tries to allow minimal disturbance to the underlying infrastructure but then you know you stop the previous version first and that is not app this is not what our portion is mentioning our portion is mentioning we retire the old version after the new version has been deployed correctly so let us look at rolling deployment without a additional badge see rolling deployments is all about you know splitting into batches and then deploy the additional version to one batch at a time so they actually kind of split it so some uh, instances they serve the old version and some instances they serve the new version that is how it works and to maintain the full capacity during the deployments you can configure environment to launch a new batch of instances so this is known as rolling deployment this is but this is with an additional batch but we are talking about without an additional batch you see here if you see here it is talking about with an additional batch okay so without an additional batch it will not work this way without an additional batch will have uh, downtime and will not be suitable for this kind of requirements so what we are left with is uh, there are two options which are left with blue green deployment so in this case in the blue green deployment you create two separate but identical environments one environment is a blue one which is running your current application so that your downtime is minimized and there is another environment which is a green one which has the new application version running on that so that is why we call it blue green using this blue green uh, deployment strategy it increases application availability it reduces deployment risk and it is very simple to roll back the process if the deployment fails so you deploy it the new version does not work that has some bugs and errors and the management says hey guys just roll it back so it will be very easy for you to roll it back to the previous version because the previous version was still working and once that testing is complete on the green environment and you are happy they are saying that okay i don't have any bugs all my developers and testers have tested the deployment and they are good with it that is the time my friend that is the time when live application traffic is directed to the green environment and the blue environment is deprecated this is exactly exactly what you want once the new environment is fully functional and it is at that point in time you are comfortable saying uh, the old version to retire it's like when the sun is totally settled earning a handsome salary that is the point when you can request your dad to retire or, or any of your parents to, to retire okay so blue green deployment is perfect in this scenario okay so we know option d is correct now what about immutable deployment see in the immutable deployment we do not rely or we do not use the current infrastructure we have a new infrastructure we put the new version on the new infrastructure okay and when we are happy with the application performing well and has zero bugs on the new environment the new version of the application on the new environment is all good then we tell the old infrastructure guys you can go offline because i am going to take the live customer feeds here now so that is how immutable deployment works so i hope you are able to understand how did we arrive at uh, these two answers and uh, focusing on the concept is important so this channel is all about helping you with certifications primary cloud certifications in the space of amazon aws cloud azure cloud google cloud and we have 
prepared content which will help you clear the Mickey Mouse level entry certification around cloud, intermediate and advanced certifications. So this is a one-stop shop for clearing your cloud certifications. Now another important thing is we do have membership areas. You can become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member by joining and becoming a member on this channel for a very small premium. This helps you with gaining access to a lot of important questions, which is very important for you to clear these certifications. Focus on the concepts, the questions may or may not be same or exactly similar, but then if you are aware of the concepts, it will be pretty easy for you to navigate and clear the certification successfully. This brings us to the end of part 40. The previous parts have been uploaded in the members area. Do take time to check those questions.